Hey everyone, what is going on? In this video, I will show you how you can update the item data to show the correct values and we also implement the filtering for the crafting items. Here's the preview. As you can see here in the crafting widget, we have the items with images and names. Also, when I click on one of the buttons, the items get filtered to the category we clicked on. Let's dive into it. Open your project and go ahead and open also the WB crafting menu. And let's also open the WB crafting slot. A small mistake I made in the last video is inside the crafting menu in the graph. Inside the start slot creation, where we save our craftable items, I made this into a local variable. This is not correct. We need to have this inside the global variable. So. Just make it like I do here, craftable items. And this one will be name and array. Remove the local variable like this and then set it. So now we save the craftable items in this crafting menu so we can use them to filter it later on. Next, let's set up the crafting slot data. At the moment, we only show the weapon one for every item. And to fix this, we need here some variables. The first one is crafting item. And the second is crafting ref. Like this. And the crafting item will be our craftable, craftable item, this one. And the other one will be a reference to the parent, which is uh, the WB crafting menu this one make sure that both of them have the uh, public like this and then also we want to expose it on spawn so that we can set it inside the wb crafting menu when we want to create a slot so go into the create slot widget this is our create widget and here we will refresh it and now we can connect the crafting row into the slot and then we can also set this one to self because we give the crafting menu into the crafting slot like this. For the text we go to the crafting slot again and we click here on the weapon one. We create a binding like this and inside here we get the crafting item, we break it then we get the resource soft reference like this. Then, because we have here a soft reference, we check if this one is valid, if we got the correct class. And if we didn't, we want to load this asset. Actually, when I see this here, uh, as you can see, we should, if possible, use the async load class. So uh, yeah, let's just do this. Uh, go to the AC crafting and inside here, we also do the same. We calculate all the items and load the class asset blocking. Um, in this one, we could just bring here into the event graph and say add custom events. And we call this load async like this. Click on the load async and then let's add an input, which will be our master um, master pickup items soft class, class reference. And then we want to load async like this. Go to the calculate unlock again. And now here we can load the async method and plug this in and we can just pull this in. So this will asynchronously load the asset into our memory and we can use it. And then we should not need to do this in here, which is not the best way of doing it. So we can now be sure that uh, the asset is always loaded into the memory when we have it in our inventory unlocked. Now we can just get the soft reference or we can resolve it. And then we can get the class defaults, this one. Now we can just plug the name into in here and we can save. 
hit play and open the crafting and you can now see sword axe and long sword. Same goes for the image. We can click on the image and here we want to bind to the get brush, create binding. This one will be get brush and we can copy over some of the things here from the text like this. The property we need is not there, so we can create it now. Keep in mind, in this series, we worked on the inventory system before, so we just add it to the inventory structure. If you have another system, you need to do it somewhere else, maybe. I'm going here and I'm adding an image. Search for texture 2D, like this. And next, in our system, we always need to go to the master pickup item and we now need to create a variable for the image like this. Click on the image and then make sure editable and expose on spawn. After that, we can just go back to the crafting slot and if it's not here, you can just always refresh the node. Next, we make a brush from texture. So type in make brush from texture and then 50 and 50. And then we can also check if we have a picture or not. So we have a fallback here, like this. And if we have a picture, we want to go in there. And if we don't, we want to go in here, like this. And the brush we will use when we have a picture. And for this code to be effective, you don't want to have an equal, you want to have not equal this one so if it's not equal to none we go into the make brush from texture and if it's equal to none we make a variable no image for now our no image will only be an image size zero zero and we don't want to have it any color but you can change it later. For the images, I usually go to the item itself, into the viewport, and then I like to get a nice angle, maybe with a slower mouse, like this, take a screenshot, and then I remove the background. But I will skip this part. Back in the engine, I created those images. You can see them here. I just removed the background for all of the three items I have here. And then I added them here into the image slot like this. Now you can start the game and see if your images are here. Mine are a bit small and this depends on which size you choose and how big your crafting slots are. So I have here 15 by 15 can increase this to 80 by 80 can also increase this more but uh, I would test it with 18 you can see they are a lot bigger now and let's pick 100 by 100 and then if we test it it looks much better but you can play with all of these values one small thing I want to notice I did this in Photoshop like you can see here but you can also use a free software like Inkscape or GIMP or any other software that is capable of it. Okay, now back, let's close this game and now we can work on the filtering. Let's get rid of all the tabs to the right and now we can go to the crafting menu, back to the event graph, now we can do the filtering. For that, go to the designer, go here on the button and then we want to have an on-clicked event and do this for all of the buttons. As you can see, I created all these on-click events and I also renamed the buttons. Now from the button all, for example, we want to have update all crafting slots. 
And then we want to connect the data table to use and the craftable items. And now you see why we use or have this global variable used because we set this one time in at the beginning and then always when we filter we want to use the same craftable items again. Before we do this for all the buttons, let's add filtering to the functions. For the update all crafting slots, we need a new variable called this uh, filter. And this will be a item category. This one. And then we also want to have the same as an input in our slot creation. Plug this in and now go here. Inside the start slot creation, we just want to pass this into our create slot widget. So we get the filter here. Scroll down, get this one. And then we add this also to the create slot widget. Call this also filter. And now we plug this in. Inside our create slot widget, we want now to get some space. And from the filter, we want to check if it's equal to default. And if it's equal to default, we will use the default as the one for all. So we plug this in and then we pull this up a bit. And if our filter is not the default one, we want to grab this here, copy paste, and we want to compare it to the filter. So get the filter again. And then we want to check if the filter so equals and for that, you can just use the current crafting row. So let's pull it in again. So we don't have here so many lines. We break it. We resolve the soft reference and we get the class defaults. Like this. And then we just plug this in. actually you don't want to have this one here you want to have the equal enum this one and then you can just plug this together and compare them get an if branch and now if the filter is the same as the current item category then we create a crafting slot widget for it like this before we can test this we go back to the event graph and now we have here directly default and for the others we just need to copy and paste and set it to the name it has. I will again skip this. And then compile and test this out. So go into your crafting and click on the items and as you can see we have multiple items and this is a very simple problem. Go back here. And before we start creating the slots, we can get our WB crafting items container and we just say clear the children. So we always remove them when we filter and we are again creating them. Back into the game. We can see now when we click on armor, we have no items, weapons, we have the weapons, consumable, we have nothing, and all, we have all. The last thing we can do is change the text box, text, to the corresponding click. So for that, just set the text. And here you can say something like unlocked or all or whatever you like. And I will again skip this for the next buttons. So now this should work, but uh, only when we click. So on the first time we do this, we want to go into the create slot widget and here on the default, which is our first, we want to set it to unlocked also. Now if you play test it and see unlocked, armor, weapon, consumable and resources. And that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. 
feel free to leave a comment here or join my Discord to talk about the video. And before this video ends, I want to show you a small preview of what we will do in the next video. As you can see here, I have updated the design a little bit. And in the next one, I will show you how you can add the selected effect, which you can see here, and the hover effect with the animation. See you then. Bye.